Hey guys, so unfortunately I lost a lot of film. Um, I accidentally reached into my pocket to grab my camera out one day. I looked at the screen and it says formatting. Uh, I don't know what happened. I guess uh, I left my camera on by accident and uh, stupid GoPro started formatting everything on it. So I lost hours and hours and hours of film uh, of Cooper's car and the golf cart. So unfortunately, uh, I don't have any film of me building the front end uh, suspension on this car, uh, which was a pretty unique setup. It's a cantilever uh, air ride suspension. So basically all I've got is a little bit of film of how it works. But stick around because in this video I've got a lot planned. I'm fiberglassing the floor and the firewall into place on the body. I'm mounting the body on the frame. And then uh, I've got a compressor that I'm building a mount for and then mounting it onto the firewall. And then I'm building an engine um, using my CNC plasma table that I got. I got a new CNC plasma table that I haven't showed you guys yet, but uh, it's pretty awesome. And I designed a quarter scale uh, small block Chevy engine that can be bent by hand and tack welded together. Um, and it came out really awesome. So stick around. Uh, to the end of this video so you can see all that and I uh, hope you guys like it. My procedure for fiberglassing the floor and firewall in is pretty simple but can be very messy. Fiberglass is definitely not my favorite material to work with. I start off with creating a template out of cardboard and then transfer that to plywood. Once I have the plywood cut out and fit into place, then I'll cut out three layers of fiberglass cloth to the shape that I need. That way I have them ready to go after I mix up the resin and I'm not racing the clock trying to cut them out. The resin can start to harden pretty quickly. Next up, I'll mix the resin and use a paintbrush to brush on a layer over the plywood and the inside of the body where I'll be laying the fiberglass. Next, I'll lay down the first layer of fiberglass cloth and then using a resin soaked brush, dab the cloth until it is soaked. I'll repeat that for all three layers of fiberglass. Instead of tapping each hole with threads, I decided to opt for these rib nuts. They really make things so much easier in certain situations. I obviously wouldn't trust them for a crucial component on an actual car, but for a build like this, they're perfect.
I needed a compressor for Cooper's Coop and I'm running low on space in the back. Um, don't really have anywhere to put one um, due to the suspension back there. Uh, it just really takes up a lot of space. And um, you know, the trunk area, how it curves down, just also removes a lot of space. So I went on Amazon and I found this portable DC compressor. Comes with a light on it, a control box that you can program like what PSI you want to air it up to. And uh, well, my goal is to, I mean, it's already small, but it's not small enough to fit in the back um, and be hidden. So my goal is to strip this thing down as much as possible to try and find just the compressor part that I need um, and see if we can fit that back there. We'll just strip all this plastic off and um, try to get to the root compressor component. So uh, let's start taking it apart and see what we can find out. This is the small compressor that's inside that casing. So I'm thinking I should be able to find a spot for this. It's pretty small. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll take it over to, uh, to the car. We'll put it in there and we'll see if we can find a place for it. So after test fitting the compressor everywhere under the car, it just wasn't fitting anywhere. So I took a step back and looked at the compressor again and thought, hmm, this thing kind of actually looks like a brake master cylinder. So that sparked an idea and I ended up designing a mount for it that would bolt to the firewall and look like a master cylinder. So that leads here to where we're cutting out that mount on my new Crossfire Pro plasma CNC table. I'm gonna do a full video on this table soon, but I've gotta tell you that this thing has been amazing. A complete game changer in my garage. Next up is the engine. I searched online for days looking for a quarter scale engine I could drop in this thing and I could not find anything. I even looked into buying a 3D printed engine but doing that I ran the risk of it melting in the sun at car shows. So I did some research and found dimensions for a small block Chevy engine, reduced those dimensions to a quarter scale, then I designed each part in Fusion 360 to where they could all be bent by hand and tack welded together to create a quarter scale replica of a small block Chevy. I cut all of these parts out in 16 gauge steel and you're about to see how easy it is to bend and assemble. Okay, so here is the whole engine cut out. We have the engine block, the intake manifold, the heads, 
We have three little carburetors. Valve covers. These are the valve cover base plates. And we have little uh, header flanges. So now we just need to bend everything up, uh, weld everything together. And uh, <clears throat> just to give you an idea of how this works, you can see how everything has a relief cut. So everything, every piece you see here can be bent by hand. So no machines needed, obviously besides the CNC table, but once everything's cut out, you just bend it up by hand and tack everything together and then you have an engine built. So we'll start off with the engine block. I actually plan on selling these as a DIY build-it-yourself kit very soon, so keep an eye out in the description of this video for a link. As soon as I have them up for sale, I'll put the link in the description. So now I just need to start tacking it up to get it uh, perfectly lined up, but uh, I'm actually really pleased with the way that came out.
Next up, I'm fabricating some engine mounts. These are some more parts that I cut out on my CNC table. The threaded mount will weld to the engine and the mount on top of that with the arms will weld to the frame. So right now I've got the engine mocked up into place with the new engine mounts. Nothing's welded into place, they're just kind of resting on this tubing here. But it, this is exactly where it's going to go, I just need to weld it into place. Moving on to the exhaust headers. I wanted Cooper to have the same headers that I have on my hot rod, which are the lake style headers that are cone shaped. So I started with a one inch diameter tubing and cut a pie shaped section out of it. Then took it over to the bench vise and used that to squeeze it back together to form a cone shaped tubing. There might be a better way to do this, but that's what I came up with. I welded that together and then started welding in the other sections until I had a completed lake style header. Well, for those of you that stuck around to the end of the video, thanks for hanging out and watching the whole thing. Uh, this was a pretty long one. If you made it this far, you might as well go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. And of course, if you hated it, hit the thumbs down. Um, leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And uh, hope to see you guys in the next video.